Hello, everyone. Um, I want to share with you my lifelong enthusiasm for what I do. Because what you do in life is probably the most important byproduct of how you will spend your limited time. When I was seven years old, I suddenly realized I wanted to be an architect. And I found this out because I happened to be watching television. And I saw a TV program showing a character who was an architect designing buildings that would inspire the whole world. And I realized that in this particular job as an architect, how we design our buildings, our cities, our society, really is something that you will leave behind, something that will live beyond your life. Isn't that an incredible gesture that you can give to the world in your own limited time on this planet? So today, I thought what I would like to do is to explain that journey with you through a project that we have been doing in my company with my colleagues that really is about designing a new world together. Designing a building that would be totally different and to show the world how a new world can be created. We all know that we play a very, very small part on this planet. There is now currently 7 billion of us. But actually, each one of us is very, very important. Each one of you, every idea that you have, every creative thought that you have, every piece of hard work that you come up with, changes this world. And when I was about eight years old, my parents took me to watch a movie. And it was the movie that showed this to me. It was this movie called Star Wars, where in the middle of this science fiction movie, this huge planet had been man-made and had been created as a space station. Never before had I ever thought it was possible to design a world to design an actual planet. But there are people in this world that is capable of such imagination without the fear of scale, without the fear of, of challenges which are too big. And we need the young people of today and tomorrow to have that spirit in order to design and create the buildings of the future that can make our society solve many of the problems that we are facing. About six years ago, we were invited by the country of Dubai to enter into a competition to design a building that would change the world. And I remember I was on a plane flying back from Dubai, and I was looking out of the window, and I was looking over the planet's surface, and I was thinking, wow, what a beautiful thing this planet is. And I was recalling back from my old kind of geography days that a planet is really an incredibly beautiful object. So I thought, why don't we design a building that would be just like our own planet, and we would land it in Dubai on the desert, just like landing a giant Death Star onto our planet. And within that planet that we would build would be things that would create the nature of our planet again. Learning from the beauty around us and using the technology that we know to be integrated into this architecture. We call this cybertecture, a new form of architecture that uses technology to enhance the environment. So what did we come up with? What did we visually come up with? We came up with this. This is called the Technosphere, and it's the world's single largest spherical building that tries to mimic the planet Earth. It is all about being brave. It is all about being audacious. And it is all about applying what we know and the technology around us to create an architecture that is completely different from what we call a typical building. This building lives and breathes in a different way. It generates its own energy. It recycles its own water. It grows its own crops to keep the people inside safe and healthy in a sustainable way. We are faced with so many problems now on this planet. The way we have designed the roads, the buildings, the cities, the power stations, all of these infrastructure, 
we have seen that they have caused a lot of problems. So we need next generation of buildings that live and breathe for us in a healthy way. In order for this budgeting population around the world, all of you young people, you need to have a healthy place to live in the future in order to really show the great work that you can do. Bringing people together in great, beautiful civic spaces like this that promotes a sense of community, that maybe one day we can have giant TED conferences in buildings like this so that we can share our ideas and thoughts will be a beautiful way of creating a harmonious society. So how do we do this? Well, actually, I have a fascination with computers, even from a young age. And today, the way in which we design uses the tools that we love, which is the latest computers and the latest computer technology. So here we are, we run through this very quickly. We use a computer to model uh, a planet to the right size. We carve from this planet the spaces that we want to create inside. We can even skin this building and look at how we build the infrastructure and the structure of this building so that we can actually keep people in a very kind of unique kind of shell, keep them safe. We can use this model to design the skin on top, the glass on top, and in almost the whole building has been created within the virtual space of the computer. We augment that with our imagination. We make sketches about how this space should feel. And we start to integrate it into the model so that eventually it becomes something like this. Now this building is under construction at the moment, so it's not complete. So I'm going to show you some models that show this full vision of creating a planet on our planet. So here it is, a 160 meter tall, thereby 160 meter wide, gigantic sphere. The amount of surface area in this building is about two times the size of the ICC tower here in Hong Kong. So that's the kind of sheer size of the building. The building has a population of over 40,000 people, which classifies it as a small city. People live in this building, work in this building. There are convention centers, shopping malls, museums, apartments, and hotels. And it brings together people in a way that no other city does. There are no roads in this thing. There's no, there's no traffic jams. People live together in a very condensed way using much less energy than we are consuming at the moment. All of this is a vision. It's a vision that we have to change the way in which architecture is being applied in the modern world. We shouldn't still be building in the same way that we built before. We must be brave to take those solutions ahead that would be innovative and can really change the world. Every morning I try to remind myself that every second that we're designing our buildings, designing our projects, we should somehow, in a good way, change the world. And I encourage my team and my partners and my clients to do so. But as well as this, it is based on really, really amazing ideas. For example, we try to create a Garden of Eden inside this planet. So that this Garden of Eden is naturally ventilated, keeping people safe from the deserts, sandstorms and heat. So here is the giant valley of Eden inside. These ideas come from the young people on my team. They thought about what it is like to live in an entirely new kind of space. We looked at the geography and the ecology of different places on, on, on the planet to create this 100 meter tall canyon that naturally draws the air through so that we don't even have to feed it with air conditioning. And all the people in the canyon, through these glass cliffs, can see each other, see the life in this building, share in the activities and the events and the wonders of all of the population inside. And just like the valley of nature, we started off with a planet, so we learned from nature. We have a giant river running at the bottom of this valley that we use technology to use this water to recycle in this giant planet. And when we recycle this water, we can save so much water that is being used. In a city like Hong Kong, 
So much water is being used and being wasted. Here in this building, all of the water being used by these people are being recycled through this river. Learning from nature is one of the great inspirations behind our work. And we also have this fascination for new shapes. I don't think buildings should anymore be squares and rectangles, boring shapes. They should be like nature. They should be beautiful. So here at the center of our valley, we have this silver egg, which contains an auditorium and cinema that allows the people to come here, watch movies, uh, see presentations, and perhaps another kind of TEDx event in a place like this to draw the people together. At the top of this giant planet, we draw our energy from the sun. There is a deliberate direction now where we have to get renewable energies from the environment around us. So here on top is a giant 100 meter radius loop of photovoltaic cells. It's like a photovoltaic farm, a solar farm, that is drawing energy from the sun to power this building. And then just like our own planet, where we have tropical forests in the hottest parts of our planet, we try to recreate these zones to keep this building cool by creating rainforests and farms in the sky. These farms, we, we, we grow fruit trees, we have waterfalls, we bring birds and fish from different kinds of parts around the world to bring and nurture this kind of nature in our building. Architecture is very, very powerful. It is what man makes to shape his own environment. It is what man makes to keep himself safe. But it is also what man makes that affects our planet. So when we design, when we look to the future, let's be brave. Let's change our world. Let's be creative. Let's be innovative. And then we can really, really build a better world. The future is in your hands. Thank you.